Hello, hello, hello. Hello, guys. Happy Friday, Friday. Today is Managing Your Business Finances Friday. And so every Friday we go live talking about how to manage your business finances. Um, this is our fifth week doing how to manage your business finances live at Friday on five o'clock. So today we're gonna to talk about managing your business finances. And the reason why I say that this is our fifth week is because if you guys like today's information, you're gonna to wanna to go watch some of the previous weeks because every week we speak about, we start at the same place where it's laying the foundation to manage your business finances. And then we kind of speak pick a certain topic to dig a little more in detail with and so today the part we're going a little bit more in detail with is how to pay yourself but we have to get there first right so happy friday everyone i hope everyone had a really really good week i know it's a friday night a lot of you could be many other places i'm glad that you are here but let's just dig right into it right and for those of you that want to take notes take out your pen and paper if at any point in time you guys do feel like I am going a little too fast or anything like that um, or have some questions, drop them in the question box so that I can answer the questions at the end. Or if you are catching this on a replay, go ahead and leave me a question in the DM or comment so I can make sure I address it next week or reply to your DM. So um, when it comes to entrepreneurs, a lot of the entrepreneurs that we come across are a good majority of them first generation business owners and when it comes to us being first generation business owners a lot of time we we don't realize um, the importance of money or money management and then we start these businesses and everyone can earn revenue and start to get sales right but when sales start coming in, how do we actually start managing the money in which the sales are bringing, right? 90% of businesses right now fail due to miss money management and not understanding what to do when money actually starts coming in and how to get their accounting in place, whether they're doing it themselves in-house, right? If you're a business and you do your own accounting, we call that in-house, or you work with an accounting firm or an accountant, then, um, you're still going to need to know, understand the importance of how to manage said finances. Because if we know that 90% of businesses fail due to missed money management, we want to make sure we understand once that money starts coming in, how are we going to start taking care of it, right? And so um, the number one thing and where I start every live for the last few Fridays is that how we want to start handling our money and our business is by laying down a strong foundation, and what does that mean? Hey, Carmen, what does laying a strong foundation means? Well, it first means by doing a couple different things. When you set up your business and you set up your corporation, or even if you are, or or even if you are a sole proprietor and don't have a corporation, which means you just don't have a corporation, um, you can still go on IRS.gov and re request a tax ID number, and that tax ID number will allow you to open a separate bank account. Or even if you start a corporation with an accountant or by yourself on the state website, you can go ahead and open your business bank account. The first step of laying the foundation to managing your expenses, managing your business finances correctly is to make sure that you are separating the business income. If you guys didn't watch, I think three lives ago, we talked about your first initial investment to that business. You are able to loan yourself loan the business a loan from yourself making yourself the bank and we'll go in detail in that last live or you can go back and check out my youtube video and in this case when we talk about laying the foundation for your business we need that business bank account to be funded right so there's going to be an initial investment that goes into that business bank account whether it's a thousand dollars five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars whatever it is we need that initial investment to go into that bank account now 
we do need to lay the foundation and so that means we need to separate all personal and business expenses we want to make sure that we're separating business expenses because that's how we're going to really in a few months now pull the data and the information for how much the business has earned and then we can start to create budgets around how much we should pay ourselves which we're going to go into detail today when our first payment to ourselves should be which we're also going to go into detail today we have to first fully fund that account right and so when you first create your business laying the foundation means separating your personal and your business expenses you now have a corporation you now have a corporation and now you want to fund that business account right you're going to want to put an initial investment in there as someone said how much or for how long, you're gonna to wanna to put an initial investment in there, whether that's $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, whatever you can, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do that. All of the expenses that are gonna come out of that initial, all of the expenses in the initial, uh, whatever you have to buy to get your business started, all of those operating costs should come out of said bank account. Now, if you don't have, let's say the business has no money, you're starting from scratch, what you're gonna to wanna to do is loan your new business money. This is when you start operating yourself like a bank. I, Carmen Mohan, can loan my company $10,000. I can write a check out, deposit it into my business bank account. Now my bank, and there can be some sort of loan agreement, and now that bank account, or that business I should say, has to pay that loan back plus with interest. And that could be the way I set myself up to make my first payment to myself, which would really just be recouping my investment and then give, paying myself interest. Now, you can only do this, you can do this, but you, can, you have to do it carefully and you have to make sure that your paperwork matches to so make sure that you're compliant with the IRS and your state tax departments. So now, we have, we're still talking about laying the foundation, separating our personal or business expenses, if we're gonna fund our new business account, what we're gonna to wanna to do is make an investment into that account for the sake of what we were talking about. We used easy numbers, whether that's a thousand, five thousand, or ten thousand dollars into our new business account. If we, the person, is going to give a loan to that business, the paperwork needs to be set up correctly where that business can now pay us back as the bank plus interest. So just hold that thought there for a second. Um, in order to lay a strong foundation, we need to make sure that everything that we're purchasing, we have a full record and account of. So that means after I have this new bank account with the money in there that was loaned, everything that I start to purchase for my business should come from that account. Whether it's supplies, whether it's um, a learning course, whether it's now I need materials, whatever it is, start marketing. Let's say we start, I'm gonna write this number down. Let's say we start with $5,000. And now I'm a t-shirt company. For today, I think every Friday, we, every live lesson, we need like um, a fake company. So today, last, I think last week I used t-shirt, uh, last week I used cleaning, today I'll use t-shirt. Either way, um, so today we have, so now we have a t-shirt company. We loaned the t-shirt company $5,000. It now has $5,000 in there. Now, in order for me to make money, I have to start, I don't know, a Shopify, Shopify site. I have to pay someone to build it. Starting Shopify, I believe, is free. Paying someone to build it, I believe, costs, let's say, 300 bucks. Um, I need a website, let's say, 500 bucks. I need to buy some t-shirts. Let's say I bought 100 at $2 a piece, that's $200. Let's say I now have to get them printed, I don't know, another $500. Um, let's say now um, I created a social media and I ran, I don't know, another $500 in ads. What is that together? 5, 10, 15, excuse me, 5, 10, 15, 20. So that's $2,000 in expenses. Everything that I expense from this account on the side, should everything that I'm purchasing should be expensed from this account on the side. 
let's say I did that within my first 60 days. Now, after my, and now in my third month, I only have $3,000 left in the account. But now I'm starting to earn sales. I have 100 t-shirts based on what I talked about in expenses, right? Let's say I only sell 50% of them. Let's say I sell 50 t-shirts in another three months. And how much does a t-shirt cost, guys? Um, let's say a t-shirt is, I don't know, 20 bucks. I think that's kind of high for a t-shirt, but you know, I shop at Target, so what do I know? Uh, um, so 50 t-shirts at $20 is $1,000. So now I earned back $1,000, now I have $4,000. I just use this as an example to set, to set, to set the example of when are we going to start to pay ourselves. So according to this business model, right, according to my t-shirt business, right, I first have to operate, I have to first loan, my, loan the business some money, and then I have to start figuring out what are my monthly expenses I need to start operating. Then I'm going to start generating sales, which is why I gave, in this example, my three-month three example. I'm going to start generating sales. Let's say after three months, I actually start generating sales. By month four, I'm going to start not only generating sales, but I'm going to know kind of like what my monthly expenses are. Now, most people would say, see that first initial $1,000 start coming in and say, oh, okay, I'm going to pay myself $1,000 because that came in. That's wrong. When does a business owner start, laying, start paying themselves? Well, first you need to figure out what are your operating expenses totally for to even start earning some revenue. If you haven't earned any revenue, or even when you first start earning revenue, that's not the right time to start setting up yourself for payment. What you're gonna wanna do, and write this down if you are taking notes, a rule of thumb is to have three months minimum of business expenses before you even pay yourself a dollar. Now, outside of that, if you want to really start building a sustainable business, the most law the 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 best businesses take most of their money and reinvest back into it and so if we want to start actually building and laying a strong foundation for our company then we want to say we don't want to start paying ourselves until we have six months set aside in expenses in case there's something that happens now if you want to go an even further length to depending, and then this is all gonna be dependent on your type of business, right? Because if you're a seasonal business with a large bulk of money, like a tax business, that's, it's gonna look a lot different in the forms that you pay yourself. Right now we're talking about an online t-shirt business company, so that's a great example. If I have now an online e-commerce and I have six months of my operating expenses already put to the side, then that could be a, for a good time where I should start thinking about paying myself. And then when I start thinking about paying myself, right? At that point, I should start, I should already understand what my business actually needs to survive. Whatever my monthly overhead is, I need to at least have secured a couple of those months to the side before I even think about taking a dollar, don't you think? I definitely think, I'm an accountant. <laughs> um, Do any of you guys have questions? I feel like the last live I talked all the way through. Um, it wasn't as interactive. And when you talk all the way through, it's kind of um, awkward because you just look at yourself. But uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so now that I have the three or the six months in operating expenses to the side, that's a good time for me as a business owner to start thinking about paying ourselves. So. When I'm managing my business finances and revenue is now coming in and I have now secured my little safety net there, what's the next step? The next step is I'm going to think about what am I going to pay myself weekly, okay? You need to create a set amount for what you're going to pay yourself. And if you have another source of income, like if you have a full-time job, I would wait another six months or three months to even pay yourself altogether. 
And instead of paying myself, what I would do is create another account and in that separate account, start making that an investment account for your business, for the growth of your business. And instead of paying myself, let's say I chose to pay, start to pay myself $500 a week. If my business is my side business and I'm trying to build it up and I have a main source of revenue, like a nine to five, I'm not going to wait till I have three to six months of operating expenses to the side. I'm going to hold those three to six months of operating expenses. I'm going to create a new account. And in my new account, what I'm going to do with that new account is start to pay that account as if I was paying myself $200 a week, $400 a week, $500 a week, whatever it is, $1,000 a week if you start to earn, earn and earn revenue, right? Because that investment account is going to be your gold. That investment account is where you're going to take money out of to reinvest back into your business. Now, a lot of people want to pay themselves very quickly and they want to just make some money. But in order to build something that has a strong foundation, you have to wait. And I know it sucks, but you do have to wait and it will be it'll you will thank yourself at month 12 versus just looking at the first three, six, nine or 12 months. Now, again, I want you guys to keep in mind when all financial advice is given to you, whether it's myself or any other accountant online, you guys need to know that financial advice is generalized when we talk about it online. Your personal financial situation may not look the same as someone else's. So therefore, things, other things come into play. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. In this case, in this business scenario, we're talking about an e-commerce business. If I had a main source of income, I'm already getting income and paying taxes on it. So therefore, the, the income that I would create on the business on the side, I would want to make sure I can sustain that business and also be able to reinvest. Working with an accountant helps you a little bit more because if you've already, let's say, created, generated $10,000 in profit, that's when we can say, hey, that investment account that we opened, let's start thinking about how we're going to expense that in the last quarter of the year so that you can reinvest back into your business at the right time. And then not only that, for the tax basis part, part of it, not, not still be able to minimize your taxes to make sure you're not gonna reach a high tax bill at the end of the year. But that's if, let's say, you sold all 100 t-shirts and maybe bought another two or 300 and now you have all this income coming in, all these sales actually being generated. Did I lose anyone with that? No, okay, great. So, inside t-shirt business, let's say I have three to six months business expenses already saved. Now I'm like, okay, do I wanna pay myself or do I wanna start a new investment account? Let's say I wanna do both. I'm gonna pay myself $250 a week and then I'm also going to invest $250 a week in the business, in the investment account at the end. Now let's say I start earning more revenue. Let's say three months of revenue now in the investment account, I have 2,500 bucks after three months, or almost three months, whatever that math works out to. Let's say I have $2,500. In my investment account for that $2,500, for tax purposes, I want you guys to keep in mind, if you're an LLC or a sole proprietor or a multi-member LLC, for tax purposes, we pay taxes on the profits that we make whether or not we take out the money. That's why when you look at company like the sidebar, that's why when you look at company like Amazon, Amazon for their first 14 years did not run a profit. And the reason that they did not run a profit, and I'm sorry, did not pay taxes, and the reason that they not, they not, did not pay taxes is because they did not run a profit. And it's not that they did not run any profit. They sure as hell at some point made a profit. But what they did was they probably reinvested it back into it, which then made it to be expenses. 
that's what our investment account and our example on the side is. Our investment account on the side is going to be what we're going to use to reinvest back into our company to make sure we're pouring back into our company and also making sure that we can pay the least amount of taxes at the right time. When you pour back into your company and you do it in the right way, you and you have a budget for it and you actually have a forecast for maybe what that what type of ROI you want to see on that investment, then that's when you're going to start to see a lot more traction. That's how a lot of these online companies end up, you know, earning a lot of revenue in their first two years. That's why they're able to do it because they reinvest back into digital marketing, advertising, ads, um, mobile applications, all these things that they do. Um, so as a new business owner, when managing your finances, you want to make sure you don't pay yourself too quickly. And you want to make sure you know exactly when to pay yourself. And as you start paying yourself, also think about creating that investment account on the side and also replenishing that account to make sure that you can go ahead and have money on the side to reinvest into your company, which that is more important than actually paying yourself in my eyes. For some people, some people will actually need to pay themselves. So I understand with your financial situation or anyone's financial, they may actually need to get some of that revenue in their business. For businesses that work with us, what we do and try to guide them and help them is to really figure out their overall financial and tax situation because that'll give us a better idea of when it's time to start paying yourself and also how much should you be paying yourself, right? And that's almost why it's so important to work with an accountant because this whole thing that I broke down for the last 30 minutes on, okay, now we're generating revenue, now business, now income is coming in, when do we start paying ourselves? Okay, after we have three to six months of business expenses, how do we start paying ourselves? Okay, we're gonna pay ourselves weekly. And at that point, are we creating an account to be able to reinvest back into our business, making sure we take those funds from that account pour it back into our business before the end of the calendar year. And we want to make sure we do that before the end of the calendar year to minimize the taxable income that we have. Now, your taxable income is going to look different than someone else's taxable income because if you have a job at, if you're an engineer, you may make $125,000. If I'm just a teacher, I may make $75,000. You make almost double what I make. Your tax rate, your taxable income, and my tax rate, my taxable income is going to look different. So that means if you have $10,000 in profit and I have $10,000 in profit, we're both being taxed at that $10,000. That same $10,000 is being taxed differently from your end than it is from mine. So I want you guys to keep that in mind also. A lot of the advice you hear online may or may not be great advice, but it all has to pertain to your specific financial situation. Does that make sense? Is bookkeeping the same as accounting? Um, no, bookkeeping is not the same as accounting. Bookkeeping is um, the categorization of the transactions that happen in your account. That's what bookkeeping is. Accounting is taking the data and the information from bookkeeping and applying it into your business and basically pulling those reports. And accounting is the act of analyzing those reports and being able to advise you on your full situation. That's why not all bookkeepers do taxes. Any other questions? No one drops questions in the questions box anymore. So yeah, so for the last 30 minutes, we talked about lay laying down a great foundation for your business and managing your business finances and kind of what that looks like. What you guys should be doing in, around that, especially that first $100,000 that you earn, you're definitely going to want to make sure you start strategizing. You know, I use our example, and our example in this lesson for the last 30 minutes, I used a t-shirt company, and the t-shirt company started off with $5,000. 
So in other examples, you may have another business investment that needs, let's say, $50,000. And so in that case, when you start earning back revenue, then you may be at a higher income. So you'll get to $100,000 faster, but you'll also spend a lot more. So it's even more important to be able to manage what's going on in your business. And even to King Lai's point, Bookkeeping is important. Bookkeeping is different than accounting, but bookkeeping is important in your business because you need to understand what's going on in your business, especially when you're working with large amounts of numbers. For a small e-commerce like a t-shirt company, um, he may feel like, hey, I can't afford accounting, which with these small numbers, he may not be able to afford accounting, right? A good accountant at a minimum is going to cost you you know, $5,000 for a year. So in this case, if he just started off with $5,000, he may not be able to afford an accountant right and so that's fine but when you now start to make bigger and larger business investments like that like the 20,000 and the 30,000 and the 50,000 now at that point you're going to start something that costs already more money so you're in the negative more and then you're also going to need to replenish it with more revenue and chances are your expenses are also going to be higher than normal right because if this business this business model that you now decided to invest in costs $50,000 chances are you'll make it fast you'll make you will make it faster to make to stick to $100,000 I don't know my english just lost me there but it'll it'll it, you may make a hundred thousand dollars faster than a business like a, like the t-shirt business in our example for the first 30 minutes however you're also going to spend a lot faster normally businesses that take that much money of startup costs are usually cost heavy businesses and when we talk about managing our business finances and the last few few lives i mentioned it time and time again we want to make sure we start to create lean business models right we want to minimize our overhead and be able to um minimize our overhead and be able to build sustainable lean companies, right? High earning, low expensing type of companies and think about that in the beginning. So now in the example where let's say I needed $50,000 for now this new business venture, chances are that that venture is going to be a lot more expense heavy. So going into it, I more so need an accountant starting off from the beginning because I want to make sure that as I'm blowing through tens of thousands of dollars that I'm doing so in a way that is guided and that I am guided and spending that money and I'm able to now manage my finances in a way where I have multiple business accounts I have my operating account I have my tax account and then I have this separate account where I am already just collecting the investment portions of what I'm going to pour back into my business and so a good accountant and working with a good accounting firm is going to be able to see that through and help and guide you through all of those things because once you start working with tens of thousands of dollars, it's e it, may, it may be easier for you to earn more money, but it's also easier for you guys to spend more money. So, and, and trust me, you know, I definitely know. Um, but any other questions? I hate when I just go on rants <laughs> and it's not interactive. <laughs> um, any other questions for anyone that, oh, I almost closed it out, that stayed on here? Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, for those of you that don't know who I am or are tuning in to catch the replay, my name is Carmen Mohan. I am the CEO and founder of Straight Tax, and we are a virtual tax and accounting firm located with a retail office in Long Island, New York. And we do service all 50 states, and we help business owners start, build, and scale their business. Website, our website is straight.tax, very simple. It's also probably in the link in my bio, or if you go on Straight Tax, the link in their bio. But yeah, every Friday, what we're gonna do is just really break down a different part of managing your business finances. And so today we talked about when is it time to pay yourself, how are we gonna pay ourselves, and how to start basic, basically just structuring that out. 
I'm not going to keep you guys here forever. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And if you guys have any questions or if you are watching this on the replay and have a question, make sure you DM me. I definitely want to hear your questions. Also, check out my YouTube channel where I'm going to break these way more down in detail versus the 30 or 45 minute live. I look forward to seeing you guys every Friday night. And so I will see you next Friday.